Hi everybody, and welcome to Pagan's Witchy Corner. My name is Pagan, and today we're going to be talking about something that's very important this time of year, especially if you live in the South. <laughs> it's storm season. We're going to be talking about storm protection. So, living in the South, when I first moved here, it was really kind of funny. I'm no originally from northern New Mexico. Like, storms for us were, we would have some occasional strong thunderstorms with a little bit of wind, a little bit of hail, um, lots of rain, but never anything like I get out here. And most of our strong storms came during the winter. We'd get blizzards, you'd get high winds, lots of snow, all that. So those were our weather anomalies that we got out there. Whereas here, it's a whole different ballgame. <laughs> Uh, when I moved here, I knew of tornadoes, but I knew of what my grandmother knew. And she would always tell, you know, tell me every time there would be a thunderstorm, she's like, oh, you got to watch the horizon for those twisters. And it, as a small child hearing this, it terrified me. <laughs> like I was terrified of thunderstorms. I was terrified of tornadoes. I always thought that one was going to just like jump over the mountain and come rushing down the hill towards us. And we were all going to be in danger totally irrational, but from an eight-year-old perspective, not really. So from there, I met my husband, moved out here. And I remember, I believe it was the like second or third month that I was here. And it was really funny. My husband was at work, he worked nights and the weather channel was saying, oh, there might be a tornado in your area. And so, of course, naturally, I woke up my father-in-law and I'm like, oh, there's supposed to be a tornado. And I freaked out and he turns on the news and he's like, no, there's not. There's a possibility of one. <laughs> and he's like, e we're fine. And he was totally, completely calm about it, which terrified me even more because I didn't know why he was being so calm. If the weather was saying, hey, you need to be prepared that there could be one in the area. I had no idea what to do with this. So naturally, I trusted him, tried to go back to sleep, didn't sleep very much, but it's okay. And the next day, I woke up and the world was fine, everything was fine. For about the first year that I lived here, tornadic weather scared the bejeebas out of me. And it stemmed back to those childhood memories of my grandmother saying, oh, you need to watch out for those twisters. Well, yes and no. <laughs> Living in the South, we literally do watch every single thunderstorm, wondering what kind of severity it's going to bring. If it's a green map thunderstorm, it's a normal thunderstorm. It's just a rainstorm. Everything's going to be fine. If it gets a little orange, eh, we might have some high winds. Start getting into the red, then we need to be a lot more prepared. So from there, it could mean anything from heavy rain to some flooding, high winds, hail, and then we get into the tornadic weather. And that's where I really do believe that this spell that we're going to be talking about today is very important. And this spell cannot just be for if you live in the south and you have tornadoes. It can be for anywhere. You might live somewhere where you get hurricanes. And this would be something that would also be beneficial to you as well. Now, 100% I have to do my due diligence. Please do not 100% rely on magic to save you. You have to do the practical applications of this as well. You have to make sure that your home and the structural integrity of your home is prepared for any sort of weather events. And it doesn't matter where you live. You should do that anyway, regardless of where you live. You should always be making sure that you are safe in your home and that your home is going to be safe and sound to protect you. And if you have some place that does get tornadoes and you get really bad tornadoes like EF4s, EF5s, you really should make sure that you have a storm shelter or some place that you can get to in case of a major emergency. And always have your storm kits. If you don't know what storm kits are, I highly recommend that you Google them. I highly recommend that you build them and have them prepared for whatever you need. And also make sure that you have preparations for pets. So that's something else that you should take care of for you. So if you live somewhere 
like New Mexico, for instance, that's prone to more heavy winter storms, but the rest of your year is pretty mild. This might be a good idea to do this storm just before winter hits, or even do it in the spring and refresh the spell energies just before winter. Now, there's a couple of ways to actually do this kind of storm protection spell. If you're a witch who enjoys working with deities, there are several storm deities that you could reach out to to work with. So let me tell you a little bit about some of those deities. For instance, Zeus or Jupiter. Zeus is from the Greek pantheon. He is the all-father, god of storms, all of that. Same with Jupiter. Jupiter is the pretty much exact same as Zeus, except he's from the Roman pantheon. And one of my personal favorites to work with is Thor. Now, everybody knows Thor from the Marvel movies, but truly, he is the god of thunder and storms. And he is one of my personal favorites to work with for this spell. You don't have to work with a deity for this spell. It can be done completely deity-free if you'd like. I just find that it does give a little extra oomph for it, in my opinion. And you can always reach out to a different god of storms if these ones don't suit you. There are many out there. You can totally look them up and Google them for yourself, but it's your choice, whatever you'd like to do. If you would prefer to have just a generalized blessing to go with this from your main patron deity, I'm sure that that would be acceptable as well. I do find that the storm deities for this one do work a little better, but that's just me. As I've always said with any of my spells, they are adaptable to you and they should be. You should always take any spell that you find anywhere that you resonate with and you should work it into your own practice your way. That might mean changing the wording, changing the ingredients, changing it to suit your practice and suit your form of witchcraft. You should never really do cookie cutter because the way I write my spells work for me. These are just kind of templates that you get to start from and you get to build your own. So no matter who you choose to work with, if you choose to work with a deity, I would highly recommend you have an offering ready in addition to the items that you'll need for this spell, which we'll go over shortly. And if you've already done the spell, let's say that you did it in the spring or you did it in the winter, uh, you might just consider having an offering to reinforce your wards that you'll be setting up. And for me, when I do this, I often will light a candle in their honor and just ask them to bless my wards, especially if there's a big weather event that's being forecasted and it's on the horizon. So when it comes to this spell, it's very simple. And as I've always said in my previous workshops and my podcast episodes, I enjoy keeping my spells and rituals fairly simple so that any practitioner of any level can do them with confidence. Now, if you would like to take a moment to go ahead and get your items prepared, you can go ahead and do that. I will give everybody a moment to pause the video here. And this is a great spot for you to gather what you need. You can do it along with me. Or if you'd like to just sit down and take notes or even follow along with the written up notes that you'll find on the Revelator Podcast Network website in the news section, this is a great time to pull those up as well so you can make notes and change them however you'd like to for your practice. So here we go, everybody. Okay. Now, as you can see, I've already got my altar set up, especially if you're watching along on the video. The video is available on my YouTube channel. There'll be a link in the description below. So you will be able to watch along with me as I do this spell with you guys. And here on the screen here in a moment, if you're watching it, you will actually get to see all the items that are listed. I'm going to read them out to our audio listeners. But if you are watching along, you'll get to see all of the wonderful ingredients right there on your screen. Some of the items that I recommend for this spell. Again, this is my way of doing it. I highly recommend that you change it to do your way. And if this way works perfectly for you, that's also acceptable and wonderful. But I would allow yourself at least an hour to do all of the steps for the meditative focus and energy building of this spell. You will need one small 
white or black candle, white or black salt, dried rosemary and cinnamon, a sigil of home and storm protection. The optional ingredients are a sage and rosemary or lavender bundle or loose incense to cleanse your home. If you're somebody who is new to witchcraft and you're not really sure how to get those or make them and if you'd like someone to kind of do it for you, I do have a cleanse and restore blend available in my shop and there'll be a link to that in the description as well and you can go ahead and purchase it there if you'd like to do that. Now let's talk for a moment about the sigil. Now the sigil for me, I, I love sigils. Sigils are great. They're wonderful, versatile. You can use them for pretty much everything. I probably have like 200 sigils working in my home at any given moment. Uh, I've got sigils on my router. I've got sigils on my computer. I've got sigils everywhere. So these kind of things are really versatile because they are charged imagery magic that can easily be adaptable to whatever you're doing. Whatever you're working, they are wonderful for that. So for mine, I love doing this and I highly recommend that you'll see a description in the blog post for this. You'll actually see mine. There'll be an image to it. But ultimately, I highly recommend that you guys make your own. Sigils are so easy. They're so fun. You can do the, the line sigils that go with the lettering. There's so many different ways that you can make sigils. You can make them very artistic. Uh, however, I would recommend for this sigil, if you do make one, uh, which I highly recommend you do, or you can use mine, either one, make it fairly simplistic that it's easy to remember or that you can take with you that won't take you ages to redraw because you will have to redraw them later on in this spell work, but we'll get to that later. So for your altar setup, your altar setup is very simplistic. You're gonna put your candle in a fire safe container in the center of your altar. And directly underneath that, you're going to place your paper with your sigil drawn on it right underneath that candle container. Now for fire safety issues, please make sure that your candle containers at the bottom don't get very hot. If they do, put them on a, another like coaster that's fire safe or something else that's fire safe and then put your sigil directly beneath that something that's not going to get hot because obviously you don't want to catch your altar on fire that would be very very bad don't do that so for the spell it's very simple now i did recommend doing a house cleansing if you haven't done one in a while and it is spring and you are doing your spring cleaning or you haven't done your spring house cleansing now is a perfect time to do that. If you're doing this along with me, I am not going to do that. I'm going to allow you to pause the podcast and I would like you to go ahead and do that house cleansing. House cleansings are very easy. You can take any sort of incense blend that you like. I recommend sage. It does not have to be white sage. It can be just regular garden sage. And you can also use lavender, rosemary, there's a multitude of wonderful cleansing herbs out there that you can definitely look up. We will also do future episodes on those. But for now, uh, rosemary, sage, and lavender are wonderful top three kind of cleansing herbs. And all you do is you just take them. And if you're doing a loose blend, you just use a charcoal disc. Obviously, light the disc. Make sure that it is hot. Please don't touch it. Don't burn yourselves, people. Please don't do that. And then you would just put some of your dried herbs on top of it let them burn and smolder and go around your home waft the smoke in all the corners nooks and crannies of your home and allow it to permeate if you are someone who is sensitive to smoke you can use an incense oil diffuser or several diffusers in multiple rooms this also works or an incense spray I use those very frequently because I have lung issues, so the smoke actually does bother me. So I use essential oils for mine. Wonderful way to do it, very simplistic. As much as I love using the dried herbs, I use them in a non-burned format. So you'll actually get to hear about that very quickly. 
once you get done with your home cleansing, you can come on back. The reason I recommend doing a cleansing before is because you it's really better to do this spell when there's no negative residual energies that are clinging to your home or around your home because this is a home protection and you don't want those energies to interfere with what you're trying to do. So this is where I really do recommend pause the podcast, go do your home cleansing, and then come on back and we'll do the spell together. Now, once you've done your cleansing, you're going to light your altar, or I'm sorry, let me rephrase this. You're going to light the candle on your altar. Don't light your altar on fire. (laughs) Okay. Once you have lit your candle, you're going to take your salt And if you're watching along with me, I am using black salt. Black salt is wonderful. It's super powerful. But if you don't have black salt, regular white salt will do just fine. And you're going to take it and you're going to sprinkle it around in a circle around your candle. Around your container, not the actual candle itself. You're going to sprinkle it on the outside of it. You're just going to go in a nice circle all the way around it. And I do like to have, you know, a a good amount, but it doesn't have to be a solid line of salt. And then when you get done with that, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to sprinkle around some rosemary. The great thing about rosemary is it doesn't matter what stage of practitioner you're from. You probably have rosemary in your kitchen because it's great for cooking. And this is one of those really great moments where you can take it directly from your kitchen and you're gonna also sprinkle it around on top of the salts. It's wonderful for that. And all you're doing is creating a wonderful protective barrier around the figurative imagery of your home, which is that candle and that sigil. This is also why I love altar claws because altar claws are great because if you, when you get done, you just scoop up that cloth and you take it outside where you need it to. Now, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to do dried cinnamon. If you have cinnamon sticks, you could probably make it work, but I would do like a box, do like one on each side and one on the top and the bottom. Um, If you If not, dried cinnamon is perfect for this because, again, it's one of those wonderful sprinkling kind of ingredients that you get to use to go along with this. So once you get your cinnamon, you're going to sprinkle it around in the same kind of fashion that you did the rosemary. Again, it doesn't have to be a super lot of it. Now, if you are someone who is sensitive to herbs being burned, Try really hard not to get this in the flame because burnt cinnamon can uh, affect a lot of people's lungs. So just be very careful of that. Once you get done doing this, I want you to take a moment and I want you to visualize your energy and create a shield or a bubble around your home and land. And just take a moment to do this. You can take as long as you need. If you need to pause the podcast, that's wonderful as well. You can totally do that. And once you have that visualization in and you have a a good, strong visualization in your mind, I want you to open your eyes and say this with me. This land and home are safe from harm and any ill intent, mishaps and misfortunes are kept at bay. My shield is strong and shelters from all bad weather and harm. I form a bond of protection around this space, making it a safe haven for all who dwell in it. This space is full of good energy, peace, and happiness. My home is secure and blessed. So mote it be. When you finish saying that, I highly recommend taking as much time as you need. This is one of the reasons I I did recommend you take at least an hour. 
You don't have to take the full hour because we're going to go outside and do some fun stuff. I, when you're watching the video, we will not be doing this because I've already done this. Uh, but I will be telling you how to do the next bit. But I do recommend at this point, spend some time focusing on your shield and reinforcing it. Now, a really great way to kind of think about reinforcing it, especially if you're doing the white light kind of shields, is for any of you who have seen Harry Potter, is think about the Patronus. And I had this described to me by a another witchy practitioner who said that any sort of spell that requires a shield, a Patronus kind of thing where, if you remember in Harry Potter, when his Patronus kind of pulses out of his wand in various stages, that's one of the best ways that I have found as far as visualization goes of reinforcing that shield is to create that white light and have it pulse out and make it stronger with every pulse. I know that sounds a little strange. And if that visualization does not work for you, you can totally do it any other way. That's what works best for me. And it does make it very strong. And you can definitely feel it when you go outside. So if that's something that you can do, I highly recommend it. If not, find a form of visualization or reinforcement that works for you. Again, all my spells, I highly recommend that you tweak them and take them and make them your own because they will benefit your practice so much more doing it that way. Now, once you have done this, you're going to let your candle burn completely down. After that's done, you're going to take more of your salt and herb mixture, mixture of the cinnamon and rosemary, and you're going to take it outside to the exterior of your house. And you're going to sprinkle it around the outside of your house, just on the ground. Now, for those of you who live in apartments or places where that's a little difficult to do, you can take them, that same mixture, and put them into small sm spell bottles and hang them in the corners of your apartment, condo, whatever, wherever you live. If you don't feel comfortable walking around the whole building, let's say that you do live in an apartment, but you can walk around the whole building, you can also do the spell bottles, but I do recommend do the whole building because it's going to make it stronger, not just for your space, but if you live in an apartment building, your one essential room out of that whole building that you're trying to protect and the spell you want to protect the whole building so doing it around the whole outside if you can is really highly recommended because it's going to make it a lot stronger especially for any sort of protection now the other thing that i'm going to recommend that you guys do and this is where i said making your sigil very simple and easy to do is on the four main exterior walls of your home. I want you to draw the sigil with your finger and charge them with the same energy that you used for your shield. This is going to act as another layer of protection and create a ward on your home and make it very simple that nothing's gonna penetrate it. The spell also works really great for keeping out unwanted energies, uh, any unwanted astral visitors, it's great for that. So these unwanted visitors are anyone who will bring ill harm to you or just are not going to be good for your space. You want, if you want to welcome in any sort of energies or spirits that are good and peaceful, this spell is not going to stop those. It's only going to stop those who mean ill intent. So when you get done with that, as the weathers change and the seasons change, I highly recommend that you either do the spell once a year, you can do it every season if you'd like, but I highly recommend at least once a year. I usually do it in spring, obviously, because it's storm season here. But as the seasons change, take some time to go back into your meditative focus and reinforce your shield and your wards. Now, when you reinforce your wards outside, you're gonna create some more of that same mixture, go sprinkle it around the house, draw your sigils again, and there you go. Simple, very easy, one and done. Now, as you will see in the blog post, you'll actually get to see what my storm protection sigil is. It's very simple, little cute, 
It's a wonderful little sigil, works great, and it's easy for me to remember. So I don't have to take my book shadows with me. I don't have to do anything and just take what I need to outside, do the sigil, and I'm done. Very easy. I recommend when you make your sigil, do something similar. You can use mine if you'd like, but making one yourself that comes from your own brain works so much better. Now, when you get done with all of this and everything is done, you've done your outside work, I highly recommend that once you are finished, make sure you dispose of your spell ingredients ethically. The great thing about your salt and herb mixture that you sprinkled around your candle, you can literally pick up your altar cloth or any sort of paper or whatever you have done your spell on top of so you don't really make a mess. You can gather all of that up and take it outside and sprinkle it around your house. It works great. It's wonderful for that. Now, if you can recycle your candle wax, some candles are very drippy candles and they drip down. Uh, a great way to take the candle wax is to actually put it in the freezer and it will break off in chunks. And then you can take those chunks and remelt them down and put them into another recycled candle if you'd like. If you use tea lights or anything like that or glass candle containers, if you can recycle your container, glass candle containers are wonderful. You can actually do the same thing with the freezer and you can put them in there, take out the wax, wash them out and reuse the container. If you are using a tea light, some recycling centers will allow those to be recycled. Some will not. So check with your local recycling center to see if you can recycle them. If you can't, that's okay. All right, guys, that is the end of our spell protections that we have, I've written up for you guys. So thank you guys so much for joining me for another spell. I will see you all next week. Stay safe, everyone. And remember to spread love like fire. Did you know that Pagan's Witchy Corner is part of the Revelator Podcast Network? This is the same network that brought you the other podcast I am a co-host on, Chaos and Shadow. You can find other amazing podcasts from my co-host Kyle, who is also on Chaos and Shadow, such as Kyle's Communist Book Club, the Stellaris Emergency Broadcast, and the Valheim Bulletin. While you're over there, check out our news section. This is where you'll find all the blog posts to go with all of my shows, as well as other awesome articles. Have you also become a member of the RPN yet? If not, you should totally come join us now. When you become a member of the RPN, you will help keep our network thriving, as well as getting amazing perks, including bonus audio from some of our shows like Chaos and Shadow, early access to some of our articles, one free Reiki session by me, or a free tarot reading from Kyle or myself, and so much more. So come check out the network today. There'll be a link in the description below. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see y'all next week.